still All I'm hard for you All I'm hard for your love You're the only On this smooth Oh my rough Yeah baby baby All my troubles You wash them away Oh you wish On me a man Can't change And oh I was drinking Myself off the wall Went down like A waterfall Ah, you pick me up, you're gonna grow Oh, I'll be here for you to hope I'm not gonna let go Until it's on cold When I'm When I'm lonely And I, I ain't doing it right No, 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 no When I'm foolish and dragging myself When I'm wasted and raising hell You're calling me out Cause you're nobody's fool Pulling me up with you Like you gonna grow oh I'll be here for you to hope I'm not gonna let go until I'm stunned go so long you be my love so Till my days, let me go You won't be here alone Carry you through it all You and I, or not at all I will be by your side Till we go with the light, the light You're gonna grow old Be here for you Hey, how you doing? Justin here with another Justin Sofa Showcase with Samuel Jack. Aloha. And a slightly different one to usual today because this is actually a tune I wrote with Sam. And uh, we first met through a mutual friend, a producer from my band We Came As Strangers is also producing Sam. And we got together on a writing weekend, didn't we, I think, we down at Conversion. A writing weekend. Of... And uh, I thought it might be a fun thing for our friends out there yeah. in internet land to talk a bit about songwriting and where the song came from and how it happened, because it was... people often wonder, don't they? They do. It was magic, wasn't it? it, was, it was Something like <laughs> that. Yeah, Gandalf um, came in and I think, yeah, raised his wonder out. Shazam, there we go, is the song. I think it was a... I think it came from a, well, we having a jam, I think, weren't we? I think so. Yeah. I remember having the little chord sequence, which was kind of inspired by the sound, I guess, because I, I just liked this sound. Yeah. And uh, we had, I think we'd had a tempo. I think we kind of sussed a rough tempo of, like, what sort of right. thing are we writing a, a, a fast song or a slow song or something, I think. I think it was tempo first, and then you had a couple of chords with that really lovely sound. Yeah. I think... 
But I remember you didn't like the first time I went to that funny D minor that we. Oh, the first yeah. time through, there was like. It took me. Oh, a minute. It took I'm not me sure a minute. about that one. Because that's often the way, isn't it? I mean, I think, you know, we, we, as a vocalist, as a singer songwriter, singer, you. When you find the the sweet spot of your voice. That's when the the sort of melody you can, it almost informs the rest of the song, doesn't it? You know, when you find uh-huh. that sweet spot, I think maybe when you first played that chorus, <laughs> yeah. I was a little oh, but um, we got there in the end. Yeah, we did. I think it worked out. I mean, yeah. it's a it's a fairly the the chord sequences are fairly repetitious. Is that such a word as repetitious? I'm making up words now. Re- repetitious, repetitious. Oh yeah, no, you're, yeah. you're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't quote me. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I think so. Um, yeah, and the nice bridge. That's, uh-huh. that's my first one. I love the love the all the mid layers we might call it. Yeah, um, the middle, just, middle part it, of the song. It kind of came along on its own actually. That was one where I just went, well, we could do this, and and you went and you sang. It was like, yeah, okay, that's that bit. Yeah, um, and it doesn't always happen like that. No, you know, often that's the tricky part. Of that yeah, finding the bridge can be a sticky one. How, where did the lyric come from? Because I wasn't much involved with the lyric. The lyric came from one of those classic kind of um I just wanted to write like a throwback um vintage sounding love song really uh-huh. and okay. it's straight I mean there's no two ways about it it's a straight up straight up love sh- love song about uh, effectively enduring enduring love like you know mm-hmm. be, being and about about someone that really helped me out and really looked after me and um and me loving that person for it I suppose mm-hmm. Oh, that's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds tweet, but that's. I mean, it's, it's just the way it goes, you know. As, as a songwriter, I could, you know, I'd be works, lying. Yeah, it I'd be works lying better if it comes from somewhere that's real than. Absolutely, I mean, but, absolutely. Well, said, saying that, just not to go off on too much of a tangent, but outside of this, I know uh, in The Strangers, Ellen, the lyric writer for The Strangers, writes a lot of stuff that's quite abstract about stories that she can imagine. So it's kind of hmm. her imagination of a story. Which is just as valid as a absolutely as a song. No? Absolutely, it's not. It's not my. I mean, I, I'm just. The, I, I don't do that. But but absolutely, I think it's it's all those the words, the story. It all comes from somewhere. And for me, I just connect it. You know, I have to be able to really truly believe it and really really come from a place that I, you know, am attached to for it to uh-huh. be, you know. I often wonder whether Tracy Chapman ever had a fast car. <laughs> <laughs> it's like whether that story is a real story yeah. or whether it's a, yeah, I, a, I, an I, imagination I, I, or imagined dri- driving story. A, driving, or, a, driving a banger doesn't have the same sort of ring to it, does it? Well, no, but it, no, I don't mean actually that it's a fast car, but the story of, of moving from a, a, a to a big town in a car, you know, I've got a ticket for anyone. All yeah, of that yeah. stuff, I wonder if that's... Great song. It's a great song, but yeah. I, it kind of strikes me as one that might not be verbatim what happened no I mean yeah. well, that's an interesting one I mean obviously I think it's, it's creative license isn't there all these things I'm sure yeah you know, absolutely you know, like yeah. saying about um, Adam for, for Stranger Stuff you know yeah you can write whatever you want you can well yeah. absolutely so what tips if there's some people out there that are just getting into writing songs what what would be your couple of tips that might help for them out people that are just getting into writing songs I would Keep everything really simple to start with. So I choose, I choose a, some nice chords, a, a chord sequence that you like, um, and I'd have a rough idea of what I wanted to write about. Um, and I'd play the chords, and I'd sit down, and I'd sing anything that came out, um, and record it, and then go back and listen to it. It's kind of my process like, quite a lot. Because we did that when we wrote this song, actually, wasn't it? The yeah. lyric wasn't finished. No, it's when we, as we were writing the tune, it's gobbledygook, wasn't it? You know, we call it uh, well yeah. in the strangers we call it scat lyrics, yeah, which yeah. is funny because scat can mean for animals a whole different thing. But it's a, <laughs> uh, yeah, it is just like a, a sound where it's often we'll end up with a, a song that is a bunch of sound. So the lyric isn't written, but we know that we want this type of sound at the end of the line or whatever, and then we tr- it can help inform the. I think it can help you write a lyric when you've got a rhyme. Yeah, do you know what? I think there's, there's probably some science behind it because sort of sonically there's a reason. So if we if we were just jamming and you were just playing some chords and I was kind of just going da da ba da da do da 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 da, the the, the sonically that those the sounds of your sort of the vowel yeah, sounds, the sounds the phonetic, yeah. basically it kind of shape it can almost shape and inform the lyric. You can you can try and put different words that don't sound like that in there. I'm, I'm sure that's fine, but. 
I wonder if there's it's something about be... that, if there's something about the emotion that syllables convey that not are not necessarily words. And I, I, I don't know this is a fact, but I know uh, I quite like listening to some music in foreign languages, like Carlo Bruni or whatever it's singing in French. Right. It sounds amazing, and I feel like I can. I'm getting some sort of feeling from it, but I don't understand. I don't right. speak French. I don't really understand. There, there's, there's no doubt. There's got to be a science. Yeah. So there's got to be something behind it. Be Answers on the back of a postcard. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you can tell me what A, E, yeah, I, O, and U, <laughs> how do they make yeah. you feel? Yeah. yeah, but it'd be interesting. I wonder how long it'll be before they figure that out. Mm, I think Probably in our lifetime. Yeah. Once AI start writing songs, we've got robot songs. That'll be, that's coming. Yeah. Scary, but it's coming. Yeah, my, my iPhone. My iPhone does much more work for me, actually. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, keeping it simple, uh, f well, something that we were talking about earlier was form. And I think that's a really important thing for people who are just starting out in songs is, uh, I, I learned it by, because I didn't really, there wasn't any songwriter sort of schools in Tassie uh, when I started writing it. And I learned it by, I read somewhere about doing this, but I made a list of the 20 songs that affected me the most that I really liked. And then I analyzed the, how they were structured, like the verse, verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus, chorus, these sort of thing. And I also analysed a bit about the lyrics and, and what type of words they used where and I learned about what similes and metaphors are and stuff to try and figure out the songs that I really liked. And in that process, I uncovered the, the you know, the form. And I think that that was a good... Yeah, that's the... You can absolutely. learn it at school if you want, but... Yeah, I mean, I think, it's, I think the thing is with all these things, is that's probably a really good way of doing it, actually, list, just listening to lots of other... Your favourite music or just listening yeah. to lots of different music. There's no, I don't think there's any rules. I mean, p people do do it differently, but there are certain. I think there are certain things you can do, or you'll pick up on, quite quickly, that will help shape shape the form of a song. Definitely. Yeah. You know. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's an odd one. Like, it, I I used to teach a, quite a lot of songwriters. That was part of when I was doing one-on-one -on -one lessons. Probably half or more of my students were songwriters. We used to do recording and production and, and all of that stuff as well, and. Uh, I found it a, a, a weird thing that I'd always teach them how the importance of form, but the only... I've, I've got one platinum record, and the, the song that that was for was doesn't even have a chorus, it's just four verses in a row. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, so yeah. it's like, sometimes the, the rules don't always uh, seem to add up. No, on that. that's the thing. I mean, yeah. and all, I, guess, I guess it's probably... It, it depends on your taste as well. Uh, you, you know, the sort of genre you're writing. I mean, you know, pop music is kind of one thing. Uh -huh. You know, sim more similar to rock, I suppose, isn't it? But then if you're writing, I mean, you know, listen, to, listen to it all. That's what I'd say. Listen to, listen to the music, analyze it, and you know. I think it's important like to listen to what you like more than listen to it all because yeah, yeah, I yeah. just, I just feel like sometimes if you study stuff that you feel like you should listen to or should study, it's forced. It's right? forced, and, and yeah. it might influence you in a way that actually isn't natural to you. And I think that if you yeah, mainly yeah. focus on stuff that you Good really, point. really like, yeah. that you, you, it helps you become you more than you yeah, becoming yeah, yeah. someone, you know? So it brings That's, out the, the good, the yeah. stuff that you want to write yeah. as well. I think. Which is kind yeah. of funny because as a teacher, on the internet thing, I, I teach lots of stuff that's probably not my taste, so I do, I'm kind of forced to learn things that maybe yeah, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm not sure I'd be uh, listening to much Colby Calais if it wasn't, for, <laughs> you know, um, if it wasn't for te teaching it sometimes, you know. But uh, for writing, I mainly listen to the writers that I really like, and that would be the only ones I study, you know. Yeah, I appreciate that. I get that. Anyway, slightly off track, and I don't want to just turn this into a massive ramble. But uh, <laughs> big thank you for uh, to Sam Thanks for me, making it over. Really uh, appreciate it. for this little sofa session, and uh, I'll put links to all Sam's social media and websites and tour dates and all of that sort of stuff in the description. And remember, if you go over on the website on the Sofa Showcase page, you can check out other songwriters that I bump into that I really like, uh, and uh, you might find some new cool music that you enjoy. Um, man, thanks for coming. Thanks, mate. And uh, I'll see you for another one very soon. Yes. Bye.